after every exam period, the examiners write a report, which is really, really long, really, really boring, and most people don't read it, but it is chock full of really, really important information. I've gone through them all. I've spent hours and hours reading and researching, and these are the five key things that the examiners think that you need to focus on. So your practicals are not just about the endorsement, not just about the pass or fail that you get separately from your A-level. They count for 15% of exam questions. And it's not just the method that you need to learn, not just how you're actually going to do the practical. You need to be able to take your knowledge of the practical and apply it to a new situation. So you might get given some unfamiliar um, reagents, you might get given an unfamiliar situation, and expect to be able to match it up with a practical you did on something completely different. But it's not just the method that you have to be able to apply. You need to know what the limitations of the method are, um, any better alternatives to the method, like if you had more time, if you had more money, if you had more resources. You need to know and be really, really familiar with any maths that is associated with the practical and any mechanisms that are associated with the practical. You need to be able to name and draw the majority of compounds that you're going to be using. You need to think about health and safety, you need to think about risk assessment. And and then you need to think about percentage errors and any uncertainties um, in your measurements or your technique that might have come in somewhere. These could be all bundled into one big question or they could be chunked out as short questions but it is much, much more than just knowing how to do the practical. I love organic chemistry, but I know loads and loads of you hate it. Um, I love it, which is why I've made so many videos for it, which is why there's so much stuff over on my website for it, because it is my absolute favorite. I find naming really, really complicated things really relaxing. I'm happy to admit that I'm a bit weird. But you need to be good, or you need to get good, at looking at something that looks really strange, really, really unusual, something that you've never seen before, something that has a really, really long, complicated name that you've never seen before, and pulling it apart. So naming something that looks a bit different. For example, this is Bob, or 4-ethyl-233-trimethyl heptane. Just because it looks a bit different doesn't mean you can't name it. You also need to take your large, complicated, horrifically named organic chemistry compounds and be able to pull out the different functional groups and then remember the chemistry associated with that functional group. Highlighters are really really important for this because you can like get your highlighter and circle one thing in one colour and circle another thing in another colour. Getting really really good at naming stuff and applying what you can see to something else doesn't just apply to organic chemistry, it applies to naming anything and another thing they keen to you to be able to name properly is transition metal complexes. As well as finding naming organic compounds relaxing, I also find mechanisms really relaxing. I know loads of you now think I'm a massive weirdo and absolutely hate me, but I like mechanisms and so do the examiners. You need to make sure you are precise and perfect with your mechanisms because ambiguity will not get marks. Curly arrows show the movement of electrons, so they need to start where the electrons start and they need to end where the electrons end. If they do not end in the right place, you are not going to get the right marks, even if they look like they're going in the right general direction. The right general direction is not enough anymore. In the first one, the arrow is ambigu ambiguous, we don't really see where it's going, where the second one we can clearly see the movement of electrons. You need to make sure that your bonds are connecting exactly to what they're connecting to not to the thing next to it, not to in between it. This is ambiguous and will not get you marks, this is wrong and will not get you marks, whereas this one clearly shows the bond going to the oxygen and will get you marks. You need to make sure your charges are in the right place, that the charge that you've drawn, either the full charge or the partial charge, which needs to be clearly labelled, is on the element that has the charge, not just put at the end of the, the, the compound, it has to be exactly where the charge is. This one has the charge on the oxygen, that is wrong, whereas here the charge is correctly on the nitrogen. Details are really, really important. And sometimes details can be tricky, they can be overlooked because they are just pure recall. But things like reagents or conditions for reactions, things like exactly what a functional group looks like is going to be really, really important. Because if you're aiming for those top grades, if you need that grade to get into university, if you need that grade to get into your dream course, you can't let things like 
basic recall let you down and sometimes something as simple as just remembering what are the conditions to turn this into this gets overlooked because it's not hard it's just remembering stuff um, sometimes you spend your time doing the more complicated things like getting your mechanisms perfect but if you do not know all of the little 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 details of your reagents or your functional groups you are really really going to struggle to get your grade there are some really really long format questions in the exam um, and what you can't do is just kind of like dump all the knowledge out of your head from this topic onto the paper and then write and write and write and write everything that you know until you can't think of anything right to write anymore. Your answer has to be logical, your answer has to be coherent and your answer has to be relevant. You cannot go waffling on about um, other things because that's a disorganised answer, it shows the examiner you don't really know what you're talking about, it shows the examiner you can't really answer the question properly. So don't waffle you have to make sure that you answer the question they have this horrible horrible thing that I hate which is hierarchical marking so to get out the first box you have to have one two three four five things and then the second box one two three four five things so if you have written an amazing 99% perfect answer but you've written out one teeny tiny basic thing which the examiner says that you have to get um, to move from the bottom level up to the higher level where you're going to get more marks, then you're really, really limiting the number of marks you can get. You have to get everything that's basic before you can move up to the mid-level, before you can move up to the higher level. So even if you've ticked everything for the high level, if you've missed out something that's basic, you cannot get out of that box. You're really, really limiting the marks. So plan before you write your answers. Don't just waffle on about anything to do with the topic. Plan, structure, make sure everything you're writing is logical, make sure everything you're writing is coherent. You can use tables, you can use bullet points. Um, make sure you're spelling things correctly, make sure it's in full sentences, but there is no reason you can't put full sentences in a bullet point format. And then the last thing is that this is a really long course. It is a two year course. And I'm sure when you started year 12, it was like, oh my god, this is really hard and there's so much stuff. And then when you started year 13, you looked back at year 12 you and thought, ha, year 12 was so easy. Don't forget to revise year 12. I know that the stuff you did in year 12 right at the beginning of year 12 may now seem like really really easy really really simple stuff because you've built on it you've done harder stuff you've worked stuff around it um but don't forget all of that because sometimes you concentrate on the harder stuff sometimes you concentrate on the more recent stuff and forget the stuff that was easy the stuff that you did right at the beginning so um five really important things for you to remember for your a level chemistry do not forget year 12 structure your long answers remember the teeny tiny details organic chemistry is really really important ambiguity does not count and practicals are absolutely essential that you know all of these properly so good luck guys i'm keeping all of my fingers crossed for you don't forget i have loads and loads of videos loads and loads of stuff over my website to help you if you have any questions anything you think extra that i can do to help you just let me know and i'll do my very best Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.